for a long time, and so I know all these things. So this is the motivation of this of this group. Uh, uh, I'm very sorry, but the Bio4j guy, Pablo, just sent me an email on Friday saying that he's he got a very big flu and so he's not able to come. And as I didn't know what, what to say, the schedule was not a good idea. And just saying to all of you, just go to the bar and drink some beers. Well, this is good, but we already drink some beers yesterday. Uh, so the idea of this is we have 45 minutes to talk, to hack, to do whatever we like to do. So my idea is that that if you think or want to discuss uh, stuff that can be done better by vendors or by yourself or something you think you should do these things uh, on the other side or let's say uh, ODMDB is not a very good project or the indexing uh, of Neo4j is just crap why they use it to see and nothing more stable let's say uh, so I don't know um, all people are using this project for a real project yeah or if you are have questions or let's begin with the first one yeah I am not, not uh, an expert about the pro graph processing, but uh, a small company, I come from Italy, a small company uh, which works, uh, which provides location-based services, uh, asking me to improve their um, map updating uh, procedure. In practice, they have uh, very big uh, text files containing the um, um, a plain uh, description of the graphs, and the graphs are the streets, the points of interest, etc. So they uh, they load the files in a uh, database, and then they have to uh, to process this data in order to have uh, a subset of the more or less this is the, the problem. So. I have, as an input, I have this huge uh, graph. Uh, you can think about it uh, as saved in an oracle relational DB. And then I have to perform some... Uh, some magic? Yeah, some magic to reduce it. Now, I don't know the criteria for the reduction, but more or less this is the problem. So, uh, the two questions are, first of all, is the oracle relational DB the right choice? And second, are you rich? Uh, no, maybe may the company. <laughs> and the second one is uh, uh, which is the best tool, uh, for example, uh, before we listen to the Apache project uh, or Ama or. Uh, well, uh, uh, I know that the requirements are not well specified, but. <laughs> well, I know some company that was doing something similar to that. And, uh, um, but what I have, what I can tell you is that you should choose the tools on your own. I mean, it depends on the experience, on your experience. But the problem is that I have no experience right now. Well, but I'm sure you already program it with some language. Are you a Java programmer? Are you a Ruby? Another Ruby option. You do, but if you like Java, you have many options. You have devs, you have. Uh, Infinity graph, you have many other ones, but then uh, another question is what, how much are you able to pay? Yeah. Do you want an open source project? Do you want something close? Do you want an open source project? You should give a try to OrionDB, for example. That's there from Italy. Yeah. So it's like really? buying your whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Or Neo4j, you know, like you have many options on this thing, but it's, as we said before, it depends on the use case, it depends on many other things, and we have no common benchmark. So everybody, everyone is claiming to have the, the, best, the, the bigger one, you know? Like, <laughs> and, and if everybody claims to have the bigger one, I'm sorry, I don't trust anyone. You know? So. And what, and what about the relationship between uh, MapReduce and the graph algorithm? I mean, uh, is it available, for example, a set of benchmarks uh, showing how you can improve? Uh, say there are some words, but I'm very bad at remembering names. So it, uh, we are gonna publish it if you want.
but uh, for example, what do we do in my current uh, with my current employee? We use uh, rescue. That's a queue processing system to try to reduce the huge amount of information that's going to uh, different errands. So I don't know if this helps you. That. This text is just uh, dotted or somewhere. It depends. So it's like you should take the approach of using more a queue system, more a Hadoop system, or something like that, different workers, and then going to, to store it on something. Else. I don't know. Yeah, well, I can't, can't say. Okay. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else? Okay. What happened to the Hama project? I don't really know. I was expecting something from Hama to come here, but they didn't show up. I mean, I think the last the last thing that they wrote is some about uh, June 2012. No. What, what I really think is that uh, the future of uh, Hama, Gira, and all the other ones is to mix something because I think only one of them are gonna succeed. The Apache thingy. I mean, if 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 one of them is succeeding, but I think that should join effort. I mean, it doesn't pay off that there are three dif three different projects doing the same in, into the Apache incubator. Which is the third one? Uh, Golden Open. <coughs> and they are doing exactly the same or very similar. No, one is a bin, uh, one of them are implementing a um, pregel, um, the other one has the, their own BCP uh, policy, that's the Hama one, I mean, but at the end, they are trying to solve the same problem, I mean, why not to join effort? They will have the, the bigger one, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I don't know what's happening with them. I think most of them are on, or on, on Asia, but they are working for a private company, so. I don't know. Another question. So, um, no, I, 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 you can also say something about Neo4j. <laughs> um, so, I, I'm, I'm, I'm from Neo4j. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, my, my, my question is about the field, the field of, of graph processing, which we're in the room about today. Uh, I think there are two, there are, there are two quite, uh, for me, there's two quite separate areas right now. There's large-scale graph processing, similar to the two talks that we've had this morning, we're both in that kind of area. And then I think there's, there's kind of a, a separate area, um, in my mind separate, of, of kind of much more uh, uh, fine-grained um, OLTP kind of operation, which is where, in my, my sense, that's where, where Neo4j is much better than on the full graph processing. Now, I'm wondering, like, as an opinion in the room, like, do we see those... Uh, those two areas coming together in the future? Do we see them staying quite separate? Do you even agree they are separate? Um, what, how, how do people see people? Uh, how, how do people see those two areas uh, <coughs> now and evolving in the future? For me, there is only large labs. Small labs that has no sense okay. because if it fits in memory, why you don't want to add that sense? Right. Okay? I think that 10 million nodes it fits in, a, in, yeah. in a, any machine, so yeah. if you have 8 gigabyte, go ahead. Right. You don't need the disk. If you use the disk, you're losing performance, so don't, please don't be so stupid to use the disk. Yeah, that's the idea, if you want performance. Okay, you can say feed, you can do, do some kind of, of the, some of persistence of data, okay, <coughs> but does not work with that. Okay, you can use the graph database as object database, so you can hundreds of tools, you can choose any one, and for me this is not the reason of existence of graph databases. And my, my point of view is, you want to process a graph data, okay, first, the, the word graph I don't want to use with the normal people because they don't understand me. It's if you want to use ra relational data, data with relationships, yeah. you, you need to do with big things because you, if you only look for your tweets, the tweets of your friends, and maybe at one level more, you, you have easily one million of tweets to store. And this is distance to or distance to from you. If you go a little bit larger, you have really problems to, to handle it. And this is the case of Twitch, but, uh, for example, I have a web page that it has only 80 visits, just three visits, but I have collected already uh, approximately 10,000 data about how the people is behaving inside the web. So okay. I, I think that 
for only 18 <coughs> minutes a small day but in the comparison you can grow so the, the so I, I, I think my teachers maybe not about the size but about the, the type of questions you're asking and the latency that you exactly. need before that for example, comes back so for example in the um, so, you know, if, if you're if you're prepared to wait 30 seconds for a um, for the, the startup overhead of, a, of running on a big cluster um, to get your answer, or whether you need to get something back in a, in a millisecond time scale. So what's what's the latest? And I, I, I see there are two there, there are um, quite different problems at the moment, where sometimes you you are prepared to pay that latency penalty, and sometimes you're not. And I wonder what at the moment that leads to different technical decisions. Will they start to come together, or, or will they stay together? I don't know, it, but uh, at the end, it's for something for j or the database. It's, it's a matter of this. Is what is what he's saying is, is the, what about the latency of the of the queries? What about yeah. the? Uh, do you want to work real time? Do you want to work do batch processing? <coughs> uh, which kind of things do you want to have? I don't know. What kind of what do you have? Yeah, I think. There, there, there might be a convergence at, at some point between uh, the two approaches. If you have a higher level um, query language and a higher level uh, uh, compiler query or uh, query compiler or planner that is able to leverage, for instance, uh, schema metadata from a uh, part of the graph that is stored on a persistent uh, neo 4 server, server, add some flat stuff plus H catalog description of uh, I do flat files, for instance, and then you could have something like uh, Cascalog or any other kind of big uh, <coughs> processor that is able to interpret your query and run part of it on your 4 j and part of the stuff that is not runnable on your 4 j because it doesn't fit on one machine, for instance, uh, on a Hadoop cluster or using MapReduce. But uh, this kind of uh, global graph description of the, of the semantics of uh, the, the runtime infrastructure is not there yet, but yeah, I think people are working on this right now. I think that the reason why I'm going to write it. Okay, if you if you need to answer fast or almost real time, yeah. we are talking about hundreds of seconds. I think that one important thing is despite the large of your database, you have to compute fast. So it is impossible to compute an answer using all data that you have. And you cannot read it physically, it's impossible. So nothing more to say. So, so something that using graph databases, I, I, I usually need to use, and it's not here, is sampling, okay? Because if you want to hire a very accurate answer, okay, for example, for a make a recommendation or something like this, okay, what does the people use a Hadoop, put all the night, and the next day you have the, the answer. The problem is, we will launch this product and we need to recommend to the right people in just one hour. Yeah. You start having problems. Okay? So the, the idea is, for, for me, sampling is just a requirement. You cannot look at anything. And it's not a bad idea, because if you're doing real sampling, just loading random records from the disk, okay, not the few first in the same block and this kind of thing, it's real done. You, you can do something that statistically is quite enough good. Because you can do the all, all night process, okay, and you have a high latency, but you will have an answer that maybe is not better than doing just a, a one good sampling. So, and this is something that you see in graph databases and all things that I have seen until today, I, I'm seeing that it's really missing and it's really important. Uh, at least if you want to answer in real time. And because there is no other way. Yeah. If it's called, if it cannot be done, it cannot be done. Um, I don't know. It's, what's your opinion? Yeah. Um, thank you for them to, to be. So we, are, we have to say thank you to OrinDB and to Gaffi to be, uh, make this event possible. So, <laughs> so I. I think that graph, graph processing uh, could be quite different from graph uh, data storage. Uh, yeah, a lot of people use graph databases to store graphs, big graphs, because uh, if you have uh, small data, you can fit in your RAM, or you can use a rational database for your needs. So, yes, the best uh, requirement is uh, using a uh, big graph. 
but uh, I think the, uh, we are working a lot uh, on ODV about the storage, uh, improving the query language uh, to, to make extract information in an easy way and uh, to traverse uh, the graph uh, in, a, in a few milliseconds. But uh, what about uh, the distribution of, uh, of the graph? This is a, a point that we are working into, into this field and uh, it's not easy because uh, it depends uh, a lot from the, the user requirements. So uh, based on your needs, you would uh, partition your graph in several servers. Maybe sometimes you could, could use uh, memory only servers and other times uh, other solutions. <coughs> so my point of view is that uh, the, the field where we can improve a lot is uh, the, the query processing, the distributed uh, servers using graph databases uh, behind. This is my, my point of view about improving uh, the, the, the graph database, uh, the graph uh, um, field in general. <coughs> Have anyone used the blueprints yet? Or know what is this? The blueprints? <laughs> okay. A any comment? Have, have anyone done a, a large project with blueprints? Or commercial one? Commercial. Yes, but projects with blueprints. Because what I found once, so something that happens to me very often, so I, I start working with Dex, that's a graph DB uh, made in Barcelona. Uh, and then I, I switched to, to, to use Neo4j in Berlin now, and, and, and I also know some of the API of ODGD, but it's uh, something that's hard for me that we, we use the APIs to access to access the data, and, uh, and Neo4j is providing one uh, some kind of features, like, for example, let's say, um, the degree, or computation the degree. It's something that's very nice for, or very common for graph processing as uh, some of the people who speak this post before told us uh, as a example. But why? I mean, it's, don't we uh, think about it or work a little bit on, on providing kind of a standard API? So, <laughs> I mean, it's, or also, it's, it joins with, uh, with the distribution of the data. I mean, it's, it's, for me, it's kind of open problems right now because it makes something really easy. And, and so I don't know, it's probably just an example uh, why Neo4j is not providing the degree and other ones are providing the degree. But uh, there are no, I know another examples like types on, on edges or on nodes or something like that. I mean, if you want to provide types on nodes on Neo4j, you should write your own property and take your own schema. I mean, it's not. I don't know. In some of the cases, you have your schema. Although it's schema free, you have kind of half a schema. Do, so, do, do, do you want, does anyone know what blueprints is? Because you asked the question like, who uses it? Does everyone know what, what it, what it, what it is? Does everyone know what, what blueprints? Ah, yeah, 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 sorry, everyone, I mean, everyone, because everyone, this, this came also everyone, from, the, from the blueprints. So do you know everybody who is, what is blueprints? Blueprints is a kind of, uh, it's made from, by uh, Marco, Marco Rodriguez, and it's a kind of uh, common API. Oh, thank you for fixing that. <laughs> and it's a common, kind of common API uh, to access graphs. So you can use only one API to access Dex, and for the or MDB. So all the, all the people who implement it, so you can also implement your own graph and put it into, into a blueprint. This is very nice because when you have a company or a use case, you can just use one API and then you can change your provider. I mean, you are not tied to the requirements of, uh, of one special uh, database provider. Because, I don't know, if I, now I'm, let's say, in love with this, this vendor, that's a Neo4j, but then I probably switch to another one because the other one is better for me or makes the product cheaper or, or I don't know, I know the CPO, let's say. Uh, but, I mean... Or, or it's more efficient for some kind of way. Yeah, or it's more yeah. efficient because my requirement changed. I mean, but, yeah. What do you think about this common API thing is? But the major drawback that I see of this fact is that um, one model has to be chosen behind it, yeah. which is the property graph. And uh, actually, I have never seen any very good explain explanation why was it chosen over another one yeah. and uh, any graph database that uh, can be linked to blueprints <coughs> can actually differently respond so they're not 
basically the most bigger problem I have with them is the fact that they, ha they don't handle transaction and indices the same way. Yeah. And then if you're working more in low level, I'll talk about it later, and uh, you can use the blueprint stack. Because there are interfaces that are transactions and indices that doesn't, they are, they're not cross-compatible. And another thing I wanted to talk is the fact that, um, that you asked about uh, primitives, API, common API, is that the fact that um, there should be, in any graph database, lower, uh, lower level methods for um, red nodes, and it's still not the case yet. It's very driven by the use of the, of the higher level users, but uh, in, the, in the lower la layers, there's, not, there's still not the, all the, the primitives needed to add uh, to build the graph. So it's that's the thing that is still not very. If you try to you try to use the blueprints to connect every graph database, but it's still not. It's still far from being being done. I think. Okay. Well, in fact, I, well, I I proposed a benchmark to do some kind of benchmark game. It has almost absolutely no answer from the community, so the people doesn't want to know if his graph application or, or if his good code is that <coughs> benchmark. So it's a pity. Like, because I, I choose the data from mobile lens. It's a small graph database that has only 10, 10 million of relationships, so it's, it's quite small. It's enough to start. And I, I have to try to implement it with blueprints, and it was impossible. And I what it means in, when I said impossible is you cannot implement it, because blueprints do, do not allow you to do this. In the case, well, in one hand I find that the degree has he said that it was a problem. The other one, I want to implement uh, a sampling of some kinds, and I said, okay, I will not work to do a function that makes a sampling after reading all, because it's not a good idea. And the, the other one I find is there is no way to, to store temporary results, because if you want to do some kind of data, you have to start to store, for example, this node I already visited, this node is interesting for this other thing, and you, in priori, you don't know how many nodes you will be stored or you will handle, and, and the problem is, okay, I put this in memory, I create a temporary relationship, okay, but you make, you have to make some kind of hack, is, in order to say, is, is to do this, I think that was not ready to do, to do this, and I think that was a bad idea. And the other problem that I found to blueprints is the the, the definition that it, it has. It is slows you. Uh, well, I was building building decks, so I know why the API is done, why it is done. And one of the things is uh, vertices and edges are longs, longs but with lower L. Okay, it's a <coughs> limited data, just for just eight bytes. Done. The, the, the thing, I have to try to move an object to create a long with a uh, capital L, and what I find is the, the performance dropped four times. It's four times lower. The, the reason is because you have to make an instance to put in memory, handle with the garbage collector, and it's kind of this stuff. And Blueprints is forcing to, to do with this. This is in one hand. The other hand, uh, for example, in case of Dex, Dex has uh, primitives that are collections of data. So you can have one collection, another collection, and perform one bulk operation. You can do this, you can do directly from data. You don't need to read piece by piece and processing high level using all the API in the each step. So I find this. Sorry, I have an idea. <coughs> was the problem with the graph with 10 million relationships? It didn't work? Why? Ah. Because it was too big? Or too no. Small? Uh, you cannot make an operation assuming that it, the temporary resource will fit in memory. Oh, that was the problem with the 10 million relationship? No, I, I think that it, it will fit in my machine. Well, in fact, it doesn't fit. I remember. I tried to do with Neo4j and I had problems because one of the queries was computing more than three hours and I have to stop. Ah, okay. so I, I have done a benchmark also when I presented this afternoon. Ah, okay. But I have to rewrite uh, kind of the things about blueprints and I have created another model okay. and I have connected all the graph databases to this model. So it's pretty well. So I'll show the results. Yeah. Okay. The, the problem is that. Uh, 
I usually use well, temporary yeah. reaction chips, for example. If you want to do some kind of uh, operations with databases, with SQL, we have temporary collections and we kind of things to store temporary results to store them in memory. Because you never can assume that it will fit. And that, that's the point. So if it is near, if we try to use that, okay, let's use the not, you are happy because that's it. I have a question, but I don't know if there is people enlighten me about it. Uh, it is the fact if there is a doubt between all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so we all know mostly relational databases, why they are here for a long time and how it works. Is it really needed that graph databases need to have AC transactions or not? Do people think it's mandatory? Because the, at the beginning, <laughs> most of the NoSQL other types have said that we, if we go to ACID, then we're going to turn uh, to do the same thing that we're in a database and we're not we're avoiding it. Okay. So pe people now have to choose to do it or not. I know that some does and don't. Do you some there is someone that has an idea that should it be mandatory or sh should it be deleted? I, I think that this is a really good question because uh, there, there is one thing. If you want to do transactions mandatory, you are losing performance if you yes, don't need it's it. totally performance. And you are losing a lot. Of performance. A anyone has has a, any idea about compromising this? Okay, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I think that you know, where, where for uh, the question of whether you need yeah. uh, asset transactions for your working transactions for your, uh, <coughs> for, for your particular application, I think that 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 is a that's that's kind of the answer right there. Is that it depends on your particular application. I mean, I think that. That there's a choice when you when you use a database that how you, know, you can use a you can use it in the relational world you can choose to use a database with or without transactions, um, and uh, the the impact for you as an application is is about the, the work that that you that you decide to do in your application should you worry about the situations where your transactions um, fail inconsistently um, if you if you if you're prepared to if it, you either don't care or you're prepared to handle those situations in your application, then yeah, it's, it's, you, can, you can certainly benefit from the performance gain of doing without those transactions. So I, I think it's, it's like the space that your application lives in, how hard it is for you to, do, to deal with that. So I mean, for example, if, if, you, if, you have, if you use an API like, um, you know, if, you, if you've got one of, one of the document store APIs where you, every single get gives you a list of, of values, um, that is fine for a lot of applications. They, you, know, you do read repair when you get back a list of inconsistent values and you, you decide what to do. That can be absolutely fine for your particular application. But for other people, that overhead of coding that in every situation where it's hardly ever going to happen is, is not worth paying as an application developers. You might as well just use a slightly uh, more thorough database that's going to be slower but it's going to avoid a lot of work for you to code it. So I think it's, it's a trade-off that you're making on the base of your application. How hard is it for you to resolve the complex yourself should they ever, should they ever happen? That's, that's how I think about it. I mean, it was certainly, I, mean, I guess what I, I, I think from the uh, you know, coming from the OJ direction, you know, we don't have any, we, we don't make it optional about having transactions, we own the, you know, can only be transactional. And uh, for, you know, as, as, as we believe for our users right now, that's like a, a reasonable position to be in. Um, but there certainly are applications where that isn't the right thing. It would be better to be able to go, no, I, don't, I just don't care. Just go as fast as you can. Um, but we, you know, that's a feature we just don't have right now. But there is another answer. Okay. This is another answer that I have do, done a lot of engineering with grids, distribution, data, partitioning, etc. And I finally realized, especially after use closure, that there are two, two things that are associative and commutative properties that it ensures you that you can update the data and still having consistency without providing a full ACID. The idea is you have a partial vision of the state 
Okay, if you are performing this kind of operations, <coughs> you can go updating the data, and the data will be always consistent. So you will not have the problem. The idea is, for example, you can do look all the graphs, I all the notes of a graph, and you can add one more <coughs> if you add, do not depend on this. Okay, if you can commute your operations in the way that your result will be always be the same or something like this. Okay, it's harder to explain that. But mathematically, if you can combine all your operations with two properties, you will obtain it. So that's the other point. And I think that something to keep in mind. For example, I was talking with a guy in Berlin. He was saying that the cap theorem, uh, people is, is saying that, that yeah. we have, we don't put transactions in those <coughs> because of the cap theorem and, uh, and we have to choose between one thing and another thing and then the cap in two and the performance. He was just saying that, come on, this is not true. So what do you guys uh, think on that? I mean, it's... We, yeah. Availability. Yeah. Yeah. Availability. 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 <laughs> So are transactions related also to to this thingy? I mean, it's important. It's uh, the key is like partition tolerance, right? That's the, yeah, the key. partition tolerance. Yeah. yeah. I, I think what we see is people are trading off transactions for better availability. That's kind of a big thing about NoSQL. So your cluster is always available. And I think there's a parallel for graphs. Is is this kind of yeah? There's the Neo for J's and then the the distributed graphs and there's a parallel of this question of transactions with, with that question because yeah you I, th I think you have to trade off the transactions if you need a distributed graph to get any kind of reasonable performance and availability which you would kind of make that choice for yeah, the, the people who are doing work on, on large data sets of a static graph but it's not changing you guys already have your 50 billion records and saying, okay, let's go find some answers on this data. And then expecting uh, to be inserting nodes while you're trying to find the answers. That's it's changing. Change. 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 That's the problem. It's usually changing. <laughs> I'm sorry about it. <laughs> yeah, you ask a question while you're scrapping the same Yeah. And I mean, you understand that uh, your answer's going to, well, would the answer be historical or would the answer be as, as it comes in? No, I don't keep, I don't keep a, a multi-version control system. I mean, I don't keep the different versions of the, of the thing. So the, I just, for the, let, let's say, so you have recommendations of movies or whatever. So you want to, uh, uh, and you change because people likes new things or people just dislikes one thing or people interact with uh, your website and you want to record this. So the record set is still standing. And if the uh, one guy who comes into the web and likes 10 new things, and you run uh, your recommendations, let's say, on every day, and, and, and <coughs> so take into account these new likes, you know? So the, the, your graph is changing over the time. Uh, I mean, and, sorry. And for me, one of the most important problems uh, with the technology I'm using right now is that it's not freezing space when you change uh, yeah, I know, I've been blaming lots of you for, for this, <laughs> lots of time, but it's not reducing space. And when you delete lot, lot, lots of things, uh, it's keeping on using memory for memory mapping. You know, for uh, memory mapping all the structures because it thinks it's having all the proper, all the storage for all the size, and it's burning the resources because it's reserving memory for something he's not really using. You know what I mean? Storing the property and yeah, the, 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 the internal property files. So it means you have you create a graph with 10 million nodes and then you delete the 10 million nodes and create a new graph with 10 nodes. This is an extreme, you know, but you are using memory for the 10 million nodes, although you are only storing there 10 nodes. <coughs> well, but you know, it's, it never gets smaller. I mean, it's just what trying to put an example this is a little uh, to be, you know, uh, very. Possible, but that can happen. I think so. Just uh, users or data centers are changing over the time. Yeah, and I think his case is very important because if 
he has a new user and say, I like, I like, I like, the, the, the user immediately expects the recommendation. So if you are not able to answer immediately or instantly, the user says, ah, this is, a, this, this is useless, I will go to another thing. This web doesn't work, so fuck you. <laughs> so the competition. <laughs> I'm right. Right. Well, you guys, get, get real. If, if I'm a new user and I and I rate five items, I'm not going to give you guys a recommendation on those five items. Yeah. Because that's useless. It's too small of a data set. I'm going to give you the item recommendations of the people who already like those five items. And put them together and say, here's an item based recommendation rather than a user based recommendation. Once the user gets to a threshold of they like a, a hundred movies, then I can say, okay, I know who you are now. Let's, let's figure out something specific to you. But if you get five things, I'm going to item. Yeah, no, but, but, you but you are traversing the graph. Max, you are traversing the graph. Although the, the relationships you made it before, I mean, like the fold recommendations or whatever, uh, you are traversing the graph and you are creating the new user. Yeah, so we're talking about you have, you're expecting a new user to get recommendations right away. Uh, you're going to have to cheat. You're going to have someone who answers already predefined already. Well, but this is, I mean, this is society, it's <laughs> cheating, <laughs> but like Dr. House says, but we are no, we're not talking about that, we're talking about that the, the data sets are changing. So, but you're talking about a, a query where you're talking about a single user, but not graph processing where you take the whole graph and process it. That's a very local problem, which is easy to do. But you need the whole graph, because as he said, with five recommendations, you can say nothing, but you can look for another five initial recommendations of another guy. Or you can say, okay, this five are for these movies. These movies are watched by these other people, and it happens. If the same that happens in the in the benchmark that I put. If one of these movies is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, everyone likes it. So you are looking all the world database in only one, two, and three steps. Well, well, already not all, not all the database, but I mean that you are then I set one level or another level. But uh, something that. Uh, What's important for me is that uh, that bar web cannot be burned in resources. I mean, uh, yeah. deleting is it's hard in, in different kind of layouts. You know, on the desk. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I was just stuck on the asset yeah. part of it and not the short yeah, yeah, part yeah. of it. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, but it's, it's <coughs> also for the, for the asset. Uh, uh, if we provide transactions or we don't provide it, it's a matter of performance or how we implement it because, uh, for example, we need, to, we need to keep logs. Well, to me, asset is not transaction. Asset is a property of, the, of yeah. the, the database, and transaction is one way to, to do asset. MVCC is another way to do asset. Yeah, There are yeah, multiple sure. ways of doing it. We shouldn't get stuck in transaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure we think that, uh, for example, Mark Logic uh, is also implementing a version control, a multi version control system. Too, right. and, uh, yeah. and they do it very nice and very fast. I mean. Although they have very different use cases, but it's. it's It's very well done, and it's very nice. So it's something to, if you guys are interested, I really recommend you to take a look because. The, the, the one I like from the asset is isolation. That is the one that allows you to have performance. Durability, right? <laughs> Durability. 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 I have another question. Um, Last question because when I installed this, <laughs> this discussion, um, for me it's a bit. The main problem seems to be we are always using this, uh, the wrong graph database or problem. So, sure, it's a problem. My graph databases are rather old, and relational databases are a special use case for graph databases, I think. And it was done because it was most common or most problems fit to relational databases. They didn't uh, use a normal graph representation because of performance issues. So might it be possible for all the vendors of graph databases today perhaps to transform their very special implementation of a graph database which chooses uh, a lot of trade-offs into something like <coughs> perhaps an open toolbox where we can have some declarative, declarative tools to create a graph database to our needs. So where we have a 
a command create craft database using assets, using distribution, using internal representation. Or is it complicated? <laughs> now we have Neo for J, we have Korea, we have other people in the room from the distributed craft processing. Do they see any chance to come together <coughs> under a more or less very open uh, scenario? But in the end, perhaps as a, as a tool, and sometimes the OEMC comes out, the new project comes out, sometimes the Apache Garage comes out. What do you think? Uh, so many users and sets of different use cases. So uh, a, many people come from a rational basis and start using graph database like a rational basis because uh, the domain uh, could be uh, close to the rational, classical rational database. Uh, in order to be, uh, the answer is uh, to create a lot of features you can turn on and uh, turn, on, turn on. For example, there is uh, by default the multi-version control. Uh, so optimistic transaction, but you can uh, uh, add transaction, AC transaction at all. So if you need uh, transaction, you turn on the transaction and make a transaction. Uh, the same for uh, uh, um, the, the consistency of indexing, uh, or uh, the way the index is, uh, is used. For example, if you have uh, a lot of vertices uh, with many edges, uh, or with um, not many edges, or you will use uh, a way to represent uh, the collection of edges. But <coughs> if you uh, go over the threshold, uh, configure the threshold, the, the way the edges uh, are managed is very different because it uses a tree. This uh, solves the supernode problem, class, supernode problem, class databases. So again, I mean, uh, the answer is to, to create something of the big way. Customizable in order to meet a lot of uh, problems, a lot of use cases. I'm sorry, but we need to set up the next one. Thank you for the discussion. I think that transactions in GAP is very important, so. <laughs>